Friends, have you ever stopped and think about how the Disney nighttime show is an intricate network of all kinds of hidden equipment, things that you don't see during the daytime, but create all the magic during the nighttime. Today we'll break down how hidden projectors, lasers, snow machines, and a magical tree turns Disneyland into a place of storytelling each and every night, and what secrets lie in the control rooms above Mr. Lincoln's theater. By the end of today's video, you'll see the Disney nighttime shows in a whole new light. Ricky here, join me as today we uncover all the hidden equipment and control panels that transform Disneyland each and every night into the kiss goodbye that Walt Disney always wanted to send all of his guests home with. So if you've ever wondered how the fireworks at Disneyland work, today you'll find out. It's episode two of Disneyland's Hidden Control Panels, this time Nighttime Fireworks Edition. So the easy thing to do to turn Sleeping Beauty into a canvas of storytelling would be have a giant projector where the partner statue stands. But that's not how Disneyland is designed. So Disney had to hide projectors all around the castle, but not in the places that would get in the way of the guests. Hidden projectors located all around the castle are responsible for these stunning visuals. These projectors are strategically placed and meticulously calibrated to ensure the images align perfectly with the castle's architecture, creating a seamless visual experience. The castle projections are delivered from two towers. These projectors are covered by small doors that automatically open at showtime. Notice how the towers have vents disguised as medieval grates, allowing the equipment to breathe while staying on theme. Each tower also has a small medieval door for access to the projection equipment. When the tower on the west side was installed, Disneyland also laid a stone pad for random character meet and greets near the castle. Two additional large projectors are located along the riverbanks of Sleeping Beauty's moat. These main projectors handle most of the image mapping. On the lower level of the castle, and then the two towers project everything above the castle's walls. You can see the main projectors have air vents and removable panels for maintenance access. Here's a straight projection view from one of these projectors, showing its severe angle. We'll explain this later, but for now, here's rare footage of one of these projectors in test mode, revealing its coverage area and projection angle. Additionally, there's a projector hidden inside the walls of Sleeping Beauty's castle, which guests all day long travel through to Fantasyland, having no idea they have just passed it. The projector is hidden in a service door during the day and folds down at night to create projections on a rear projected scrim that covers the castle's walkway. This scrim is necessary because there are no clear paths for projection from the front due to the decorative features on Sleeping Beauty's bridge. Now notice the spotlights nearing the castle mounted on these tall poles. These cast various colors and create moods, but are not a part of the storytelling projectors. Look around and you'll discover stones placed to resemble trails, which are actually disguised maintenance paths to various projectors. A curious guest will look around and also find facade rock work, housing projection equipment, and go away green spotlights that can cast different colors to match the storytelling theme. Next time you're watching the fireworks, take a closer look at the castle and you'll notice the incredible detail and precision of these projectors. But now that we know where they're located, how exactly does this magic happen? The secret lies in a technology called projection mapping. This technique involves projecting images onto complex surfaces, like Sleeping Beauty Castle, in a way that perfectly aligns with all of its contours and unique features. Advanced software calculates the exact dimensions and angles needed, allowing the images to wrap around the structure seamlessly. No easy process as it requires precise calibration and precision alignment, ensuring that the visuals look flawless from every guest angle. It's a blend of art and technology that transforms the castle into a dynamic storytelling canvas every night. Friends, I'm standing right in front of the main projector that casts the show nightly over on Sleeping Beauty Castle. And as you can see, it is at a pretty harsh angle. This is where the mapping comes in. Projection mapping means the projectors project skewed images at the proper angles to perfectly align with the map that is, in our example, 
a castle. This is the straight view from one of the towers. As you can see, the projector delivers its visuals from a very skewed angle. That means the imagery needs to be projected at a very bizarre angle that would make no sense to our naked eye until they hit the digitally mapped canvas at the perfect angle. Only then would these images make any sense to us. This home video from Elements of Imagination shows how they made their own Sleeping Beauty castle and it gives a great example of how Disney has the control to articulate every individual parameter of the castle, including things they don't want to project on. Link below if you want to check this video out. I highly recommend it. But friends, have you ever wondered how Disney lights up It's a Small World each evening? Where are those projectors hidden at from guests during the day? Similar to Sleeping Beauty Castle, It's a Small World also has its own hidden projectors. The easiest one to spot is the giant projector hidden behind the opening day plaque. However, due to the extreme width of this facade and the protruding clock tower, there are more projectors than just this one. The second projector is hidden on top of the exit gift shop. This projector is angled to cover the far west corner of the back facade and parts of the protruding clock tower that the main projectors can't reach. I believe the far east projector is placed in this clock tower and the trees are trimmed to make sure it has a straight view. However, this east projector is an educated guess and if you know exactly, let me know in the comments below as I too am always trying to learn more about how Disneyland works. The gingerbread house scene is a perfect example of projection mapping, as you can follow each individual piece of candy until it lands perfectly on the articulated section of It's a Small World's facade where it perfectly fits. In this footage, you can see some light spill hitting the outer edge of where the characters come out in front of the clock tower, as well as a cast shadow from the triangle light in front. This proves the projectors are indeed coming from front of house and not projectors placed along the bottom of the walls on the north side of the railroad tracks. If you notice, the train doesn't come through during projection times and it is held at the Toontown train depot. This is because the train would come between the projectors and their canvas, covering the train and its guests with projections instead of the amazing Mary Blair facade of It's a Small World. These projectors are so well hidden, you wouldn't notice them unless you knew where to look. And now you do. One of the things that makes a great show is that it keeps revealing more and more hidden tricks. So as the longer the show goes on, the more that you feel that is happening. And at some point you start to realize it feels like anything is possible. One of those added layers of texture that Disney adds to their nighttime shows are all of the lasers that are hidden on the back side of Sleeping Beauty Castle. Powerful lasers are positioned pretty far behind the castle on top of the attractions themselves, creating mesmerizing light patterns from a distance. These lasers are programmed to move in sync with the music working with the smoke left over from the fireworks to add in an extra layer of spectacle to the show. You can see some of the layers placed along the roof here, illuminated by the fire effects, but we'll go into the fire in just a bit. There are also many hidden laser systems along the roofs of Main Street USA as well. Once again, they're pushed back further than what you might think, and we'll get into that later. But before all that, there's a light you can see during the day if you know where to look. But for most guests, they never realize that Disney's sparkles of magic are visible all day long and in fact, in the background of all your photos. High-powered lights are subtly placed all around the castle, nearly invisible in the daylight. These lights flash randomly at night, making the castle seem as if it's twinkling with Disney magic, but dangling right in front of your sight during the day if you care to look. But we all know some Disney shows wouldn't feel complete without making it snow on Main Street, It's a Small World, and all around the castle. Hidden snow machines along the rooftops of Main Street release artificial snowflakes at key moments, referred to as snope by the locals because it's 99% water mixed with soap that creates these fluffy snow-like suds. These machines are carefully timed to coincide with the show's most magical moments, creating an enchanting winter wonderland due to their fans. And I'm not talking about you the fan, I'm talking about this the fan. You know, the thing that blows the snow all over us. 
However, there's no chance of a Christmas in July as the snow machines are only hung during the holiday season. A trained citizen of Disneyland can easily spot the missing spots in these lighting rigs for Santa Mickey's little soapy helpers. These snow machines add a touch of winter magic to the shows, making the experience even more special for guests of all ages. And I'd like to point out, for some California kids, this is the only snow they know. But friends, have you ever taken the time and stopped and wondered, where are the projectors for the Matterhorn? A single projector hidden around the Matterhorn illuminates the mountain with companion visuals to extend the story happening on Sleeping Beauty's castle. Do you see it? Used in a limited capacity, the Matterhorn projections are another trick to make the nighttime shows feel like they are constantly growing, scene by scene, creating a cohesive and immersive experience. And all thanks to this single camouflage projector hidden along the parade route. It appears that its vertical support can be lowered to bring the projector down for maintenance. Make sure you keep watching today's video to discover how the Matterhorn has another secret weapon making Disneyland's nighttime show truly unique. As Sleeping Beauty Castle is the only Disney castle with a 147 foot mountain as its next door neighbor. And friends, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to subscribe to Hey Bricky so you'll know why that this building right here lets off a white balloon every night. And that white balloon will tell you whether you're gonna get fireworks or not. Make sure you sign up so I can keep putting out three quality videos every week. It helps out so much. I'm glad you're here. Now let's get back into discovering all these hidden control panels that makes Disneyland fireworks happen every night. But friends, how does Main Street USA come to life nightly where all four blocks are covered in projections creating animations that completely surround you? Well, it's a window into the magic. Using the same projection mapping as the castle and It's a Small World, every building on Main Street has been digitally composited. This allows each building to tell its own unique story or work together as a choir, making the entire Main Street USA feel like a four block canvas telling a cohesive story. You can see how Disney has created an alignment grid that breaks down the fancy Main Street facades into their base geometric shapes. This allows the projectors to be precisionly aligned to make sure each projector's part of the story is perfectly overlapped with the projector next to it. This eliminates any blurring or double images. These window projectors remain hidden during the day sitting behind windows, ready to become a subtle yet powerful part of the overall nighttime experience, adding so many extra layers of magic to the nighttime show. Friends, have you ever noticed that when you walk through Main Street USA, you don't see any visible speakers or any visible show lights? Although in some parts of the park, you can clearly see the speakers, but you won't see one on Main Street USA, hidden behind shutters, signs, and mostly placed on top of the roof far behind the facades. This allows you to feel surrounded by the music, but never feel like one speaker is directly pointed at you, but instead creating a blanket of well-placed sound up and down Main Street. The hidden sound system makes you feel like you're in the middle of the action. The sound creates the story, songs, and emotions that bring all of the visual elements together if any visual element doesn't work, the show can still go on. But if the sound doesn't work, the show is over. Music is emotion and the heartbeat that creates the rhythm for all of these dazzling visuals. The system ensures that the audio is perfectly synchronized with all of these visual elements. Using well-known songs from Disney's vast archive, the music adds the nostalgia, creating an emotional experience for all of the guests. Hidden lighting rigs all along Main Street create the perfect amount of ambiance. The lights lay flat during the day and then rise on a track to stand upright like a giant easel equipped with gel lights, snow machines, fans, and sometimes even inflatables. These lights are programmed to change color and intensity throughout the show, matching the mood and enhancing the visual impact. You'll see that they all basically sit in their own little stage well hidden by the apex facade of most of the Main Street buildings. These lighting rigs make sure that Main Street is beautifully lit, 
whether it's for a parade or adding overall emotion to Main Street during the fireworks. But obviously all these different pieces of equipment need a team of engineers to run the show every night. And according to the LA Times, that happens in this building right here above Mr. Lincoln's Theater. This is where all of this magic is coordinated. Here, technicians control projectors, lasers, sound systems to ensure a flawless show each and every night. During our first episode of Disney's Hidden Control Panels, some guests believe that this building here was where the control center lies, claiming that they could easily look out the windows to see what was happening over at the castle. But as we look at this footage, we can see there are cameras all around the park monitoring all these show scenes, and they are indeed in a blacked out control center looking at monitors, not looking out windows. Wherever this control room may be, it is the brain of the fireworks show where all of the elements come together each night and it makes a bunch of different pieces play the same song at once. And I normally never film any security cameras that I see in the park. However, if you'll notice, everywhere where this show's happening, in front of Sleeping Beauty Castle and in front of It's a Small World, I did detect that there was a security camera there. Or is that a camera so they can monitor the show in the building above me? Now, what are the things that makes the Disney fireworks so different than any other display that you've ever seen is the show is divided up into two different layers. There is the castle layer that's directly behind me, and then there's the back layer that's over in Toontown which is the reason why both Toontown and Fantasyland are the only two lands that rope drop twice in one day. Hey, Matterhorn Tree. The first layer of fireworks is launched from hidden locations all around the castle. These fireworks intentionally feel very close to us, illuminating our faces. We can also feel the heat from the flames produced by the flamethrowers installed on the Fantasyland rooftops on either side of Sleeping Beauty Castle, where pyrotechnic Technicians use a ISO power system that shoots 50 foot flames into the air during nighttime shows. Fed directly by gas lines, these flames work in unison with the nearby lasers and fireworks in this same area. That creates the front layer of the fireworks show. These castle fireworks are the centerpiece of the show because they feel so close. They make the second layer feel even further away making guests feel like they are truly surrounded by the nighttime show. And there's a little secret that Disney does to make their fireworks feel different than any other fireworks show that you'll see. And it has to do with where they set them off because it's not one spot, it's two. And that second layer is crucial in how Disney's fireworks feel different than any other display that you've ever seen. It's kind of part of the magic. Disney really knows the art of layering. The second layer of fireworks is launched from Toontown, adding in that extra depth to the display. These fireworks create the multi-dimensional experience with layers of color and light that fill the nighttime sky above us. These are the huge fireworks that create the boom that we all feel in our chest. Always keep an eye out for the signature Mickey-shaped display. The second layer enhances the visual spectacle and pushes everything that is happening around us to feel even closer to our emotions. But there's one more secret that ties all of this together, and that's the Tinkerbell tree. Make sure to watch this video to see how Disney has perfected making characters appear to fly over Sleeping Beauty Castle.